Happy Floss Tea Friday, friends. My name is Carrie. This is Tiger Lily Designs. Welcome. Today we have an exciting episode for you. I've got my design table jam packed full of goodness. So we're just going to dive right in because there is lots of fun on here. I've got four whips from this week to share with you. Some of them you've seen, some of them are blasts from the past that I found and scored this I just randomly pulled out of the the whip a basket and gave a little love to this week I've got some I went thrifting so I have this fun little finishing haul to share with you we've got the giveaway winners from last week I've got also haul because <laughs> I got a big old order from my friend Rachel at Treehouse Fiber Arts lots of good stuff all kinds of stuff some enabling for you I had some stitchy kindness come in this week that I want to share with you. And there's also a quilting segment, which somebody named the mystery dresser segment of the portion of the program. And I'm loving that because, you know, it was the random dresser that's back there full of drawers. And so I went into the drawer again this week and pulled out another UFO type of situation just to share some other quilty goodness with you. And also a new segment for my channel today is knitting. I know, who am I? I don't really know, but we'll get into it. I'll tell you a story of why there's some of that. So let's just start with the stitching because this is called floss tube. So let's stay on point for a little bit. So one that she has been around for a while, but she got some more love this week. So I just, you know, it's kind of a way for me to keep track and show you what I've been working on. So this is Miss Felicia. Um, if it's your first time here, Miss Felicia is a stitch that I'm doing. I have a stitch along on Instagram. If you've joined, please check out the hashtag follow along. Lots of fun friends are stitching along. It's hashtag funky floral sal because... Have you seen that floral? It is funky. So I've got this in one of my vinyl keepers. I did a full custom color conversion to Aura Flash, right? Yes, love it. And so again, just showing you how I'm working along and the changes. And so I did round the corner, which is exciting. So you can see I have rounded the corner. This is, let me pull out my project information card so I can talk intelligently about what this is. This is stitched on 20 count LFA and the color is popover. And there's my full R fill floss conversion. Um, there's 11 colors. So it was 11 spools of R fill floss. And you'll note that yes, I've rounded the corner, but it's a little short. That's because I took off two flowers and I'm rounding the corner right here. I am going to tweak a little. I just wanted to take the name portion out. I'll probably rechart, move around. I like these roses, so I don't know where they're going to go. Right now, I'm, I'm dedicated to going around the corner, at least doing the green um, the, the color of the floral that's got the most color around the corner. So I would love to connect my borders sometime soon. I won't give myself a deadline, but sometime soon, but you can see I rounded the corner and it just looks so fun. And then of course I did work a little bit on that Venus flytrap flower because sometimes stitching with the same color round and around and around, um, gets a little tedious. So I decided to treat myself and work on that. What I have named the Venus flytrap flower. And I uh, worked on that a little bit. So we'll see. And I think it's once this border, I think it's going to come together real quick. I mean, these floral motifs won't take but a day or two each. We'll see. We shall see. But anyway, so I gave her some love this week. I am excited to just keep her in the rotation. Sure would love to um, make some big progress on that. Actually have a finish maybe one time soon. But so another one that was here last week is let me show you it is the christmas time mystery stitch along from fat quarter shop this is a free stitch along on the jolly jobber website and so i downloaded it this is through release three release four came out this week and so of course immediately had to get that stitched up right quick so we are up to date through release four now you see or you may see you may notice you may not 
it says Merry Little Christmas. I haven't decided if I'm going to put the word little or if I'm going to put another gumdrop. I want to wait and see what release five gives me. But you can see, obviously, I did a full Tiger Lily custom color conversion using Mohs Silk. I will link her down below. Um, I just love the, the aqua fabric was 14 count dyed by me with a writ dye. Also, just did a full color conversion, you know, the pinks. I wanted pinks and greens and reds. And so I think it just looks bright and fun and cheery on that aqua fabric. So I'm excited. I think there's one more week. Release five is this week and then she's done and then she'll be fully finished. And I, that was just a, a quick little stitch. I could do release four in one night. So these releases, these weekly releases are totally manageable. Um, they're nice little size snippets. And it's a fun, solid stitch. Um, I love a good, chunky, just, you know, keep thread, go, go, go type of stitch. All right, so what are the two whips that came out that we haven't seen in a while? All right, one has a little story to tell. Well, but let me just show you. Um, I want to show you. So this one, we haven't seen it in a while. This is the back cover. There's four charts. This is the Summer Schoolhouse series from um, Brenda Gervais, Lessons in Abyssinarian. Mm -hmm. And this was a cute four little charts. One chart has two pillows, even though there's five pillows, there's only four charts. Um, but instead of doing it as pillows, so here's one, I'm doing it in one long piece. So this was my new, new year, new start. So January 1st, and then I just, you know, some things I just, stitch to stitch and some things I put away no no rhyme or reason to them but I actually cut my fabric this time so that's exciting um because it's really good fabric and I wanted to put it away that's not the right so because this was a January start I didn't have project information cards so I don't know what this is I it's red it's picture this plus red and I'm doing two over one, so two strands. So I'm guessing it's 16 count. It's not 14 count. But because Pinch to This Plus is tight anyway, I just feel like there's a tight hand iron. Anyway, this is the progress I'm making. You can see, I didn't cut it all down, but I cut the height down. And so I'm doing it all in one piece. And so slowly but surely, you know, I think I got some more of that border done. It was border week, really. I worked on that border, the beehive, the little dude, added the H. I am doing this one, I told you guys before, but just in case this is your first time, I did tell you guys, there's a little bit of recharting on this. Um, the heights are all the pillows are not the same. <laughs> so I learned that the hard way as I was starting to chart and I'm like, oh, mm -mm. yeah. So there's a lot of little bit of recharting and you can see because I wanted the dude to be the dude the gentleman, to be handing the lady his flower. So I had to flip these two, but you can see the H was on the girl's pillow. And the, so there's a, there's a lot of just making it up. It's kind of like pick your own surprise. And so I'm doing the border. The border is my anchor. And then I kind of take each little piece out of the pattern and place it where I want. So obviously between these two florals, will be the two, the, the gentleman and his lady and some florals and a whole bunch of letters. And I think there's two or three birds. And so I'll kind of just like pick and choose where they go. So the chart is, is helping me with the motifs, but the placement, I'm not using it for the placement um, because the heights were so wrong. I had to extend the floral for that one little section. I had to extend it like 15 stitches, I think. So that was a whole nother floral, viney, windy thing. Anyway, so that's probably why this guy doesn't stay out for so long all the time, because it's a lot of thinking. And when I'm stitching at night, my brain is like done with the thinking. I don't know about you. Sometimes, like if it's a fresh morning stitch, my brain's ready to go, let's do the things. But um, a lot of the times it's like turn off, I just want to just go. Anyway, so, but I worked on her, him, them, um, a little bit this week. 
and I have one more. So you'll see, so I'll have a little shop update at the end, uh, Tiger Lily, if you wanna see, but, but because of what I've been working on in the studio all week, I decided, oh my goodness, I need to get in the mood. Like I should have Christmas carols playing. I know people, it's October 7th, but when you're a maker of the things and I, Christmas is exploding on my October 15th release in case you didn't know. And so when I'm sewing with Christmas fabric and it's all over the studio and vintage stitching linens that are Christmas trees and angels and all that, I mean, why wouldn't I want to stitch Christmas? So I do. Obviously, I've got that fat quarter shop stitch, but then I also have, I pulled out my collection of Prairie Schoolers. 12 days of Christmas Santas. They are just so cute. So let's talk about this for a minute. Cause I pulled this out and, and I was thinking about this last night. I only got one night of stitching on it. Um, I'm on number one, day one. Um, but do you see how bright? Okay. So I feel like a lot of people say you don't mess with prairie schooler colors. Okay. So I'll drink your Kool-Aid. I did mess with it, which is usually, it's not a tiger lily thing. I like to change all the things, but I did not because I felt like I would be breaking some cardinal rule if I mess with Prairie Schoolers colors. Okay, I love the colors. This is a bright, like in your face, candy apple's a little bright, but you know, apple red, that bright red. I don't know if I just had an old skein or if the colors changed since this was 2005. I mean, it's possible. So if the colors change, but I just feel, so again, remember, I did not change. I, I followed the rules. I did not change any of the colors. So here are the colors. Sorry, that's not white. What can I get? There's white. See? Okay. But, um, that's not candy apple red. Do you see? Anyway, this is the partridge and a pear tree. So here's number one. Do you see how bright the red is? It's, well, that's not even number one. They're all the same color. But you see how bright, and at least on the printing and the thing, it's like this, this house red. House red. Red, red. This is burgundy. Or, or shall I say blood red? I don't know. But it, it's definitely not bright. I mean, it's lovely. It's lovely, and obviously I'm stitching it. And I stitched number one, and he's got a rogue little thread. And this is on 20 count vintage country mocha that I uh, tried to kit it up a long time ago. Stayed with DMC Colors. Um, I'll, I'll finish this guy sometime soon. I just don't know if I wanna do two through 12. I mean, I don't wanna change them, I guess. But I want vibrant red. I don't know. What do you think? Do you, do you participate in the, do not change the colors of, of Prairie Schooler or because maybe in the 18 years since this was printed, I mean, DMC didn't change, right? I don't know. Maybe it's just about, I know that with computer screens and printing and ink and all the thing, listen, I understand all that, but I don't know, like this bright red. This is what I wanted. I want, this is one of, this is the bag that I have it in. This is one of my project keeper or project bags using vintage stitching. But see this bright red? So it's like this red versus this burgundy red. That's nice. It's nice. It's classic. I don't know. Anyway, I pulled it out, got some stitches in on it. Maybe one day <laughs> we'll get day one done. 11 more to go. It'll be great. Um, so that is my stitching for this week. Not so much crazy goodness, but let's just show you what else I got on the table. This could be a quick one, but maybe not. Um, remember I showed you this guy. This is the Teresa Colgate Patreon's green Santa. He's so cute. Okay, but so this, yes, I know it's super cute. Not my style, but the frame was perfect. So I thrifted this with Lily this past weekend. We went thrifting. She is a thrifting, like, um, she enjoys the wardrobe thrifting. And so we got her some winter color. She's like, one day it was 85 degrees at UVA. And then the next day she woke up and it was 58 degrees. 
I was like, yeah, uh-huh, Virginia, welcome. Um, so she did not take any of her cold clothes, sweaters and things to school. So we had to, you know, get her some, some fun, thrifty new things. So while she was over in the sweaters and the things, I went over to the decor, home deck type stuff, still trying to find a frame for a couple of pieces. I broke down and ordered a custom frame online this week. I'm super excited about it. Um, I'm still going to frame my frame it myself, but I ordered a custom size because I've had something if you've been around, you know, I've had something finished for months. And I every time I go, I always have take my I'm the person with the tape measure and a piece of paper showing like here are the six things I'm looking for frames for. But this was one and I thought, Oh, look at that at the brown, the black, it's already all rustic. He's going to be perfect on there. He did not get on there yet, but that's where he's going to go. So I haven't decided if I want him to go all the way to the edge. It's a little more fabric than I usually do around of it. Um, or if I want to mat him on a board and put another fabric behind him. I haven't figured it out, which is why it's not done, but it was a fun little thrifting haul with Lily. So that is the stitching. That's all the stitching on the table. Let's do the giveaways real quick and then I'll deep dive into some hauls and kindness and quilting and knitting and, and so kind. All right, so let's just go over the giveaways from last week's episode. So if you entered last week, you used a word in your comment and I used the random comment generator to pull the winners. Now, if you are a winner, congratulations. My email is down below and you can send me an email and say, hi, my name is, tell me what you want and I will get this out to you. But we've got three winners for today. Remember one of the first chart is Chessie and me. It's this cute little door sampler. The pictures, this is, you know, vintage because it's an actual photo. The winner is Wendy Isles. Maybe? Wendy, congratulations, you won. The second one we've got is a fabulous chart from Needlework Press. And Miller 1818, this was donated by my friend Linda. And the word was marking. And the winner is D the Gardener. Ooh, D, love that. Um, congratulations. And then last but not least was another chart donated by my friend Linda. It's Songs of the Meadow. It's a sampler with all kinds of specialty stitches from 1995. Ooh, we, I can't wait to see what you do. But the winner is Penny Tuck. Congratulations, Penny. So those three winners, shoot me an email with your address and I will get these out to you lickety split. All right, so now we're gonna deviate a little bit from the stitching and jump into some other fun because that's what's on the table. So first, let's, I don't even know. Let's, let's go with the stitching haul. Okay, so stitching haul is super fantastic because I've been waiting patiently I'm a patient waiter for my friend, Rachel. So Rachel, if you don't know, Rachel owns a company called Treehouse Fiber Arts. It is a website where she kits things up. She kind of, she's not a full like one, two, three stitch store where she's got everything under the sun. She procures specific items, charts, things, and kits them up sometimes with call for, sometimes with not, matches them up with fabrics, does all the work for you. So all you have to do is Add to cart, order the kit, it comes to you and you're ready to go. She's also the distributor of my favorite hand-dyed Ada dyer, Miss Sue from Legacy Fiber Arts. Now, so Legacy Fiber Arts, if you've noticed, I think lots of things today were on Legacy Fiber Arts Ada. Um, 14 count, 16 count, 18 count, 20 count, all the counts, the stock sells out when she gets it. Sue is also a hand dyer of yarn, which is, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But, um, so when the Ada comes into stock, you have to add to cart immediately. So thankfully I was lucky enough to grab two yummy pieces to add to my stash. Um, I should take them out to show you guys the color and I'm gonna, I got 18 count covered bridge. So a lot of the colors are the neutrals, all the different sampler neutrals, not necessarily samplers, but the neutral backgrounds, right? Um, this is covered bridge. Mm, 
It is a yummy, yummy, yummy color. The modeling is perfect for Ada. I mean, so if you're an Ada stitcher, you don't have to sacrifice and just do a solid color. There are hand dyers for Ada and it's gorgeous. And she uses this Weigart base you can see. So it's nice quality and, and her hand dyeing is fantastic. So this is a half yard of 18 count covered bridge. Now on LFA's 18 count, I use one strand. As long as you're okay with the thin, thinner prim coverage on 18 count I'm trying to think my miss lucy is on an 18 count so beautiful so the other fabric i got from miss rachel and treehouse fiber arts is 20 count boston tea party and this is also a oh, just look it's such a yummy fabric i have this kitted up i think I don't know. I, I thought Santa was on Boston Tea Party, but no, maybe he's on, he's on covered. I don't know what he's on. I'll have to reference to my project information card and let you know. But this is gorgeous fabric. 20 count. Love it so much. And so again, so how Rachel sends you the fabric, just to give you a little Everything is always surged. So you can see your edges are always surged. Fantastic for the cut you buy. Um, I love it. I hate to be like a commercial because there's none that you can get right now. But I'm sure there'll be a restock sometime. Just put it on. Make sure you get on her newsletter. She, um, she sends a newsletter and tells you sometimes. Sometimes she tells you. Sometimes you just got to check on what's there. So that was the other thing that I have been waiting patiently for. I have to start over again because I showed you all a chart. So um, was this fantastic kit that Rachel put together. So, I mean, like you should know by now, if, if you watch Floss Tube, you've heard of the Autumn Garden from this little expo in September. You've heard of the Cottage. I'm going to even say it wrong. The Cottage Garden Thread Autumn Garden, you know, the little collaboration that there were 25 designers and they used these floss and and you get this cute little, goodness gracious, that was upside down, cute little card and the thing. And they only used those four colors, right? So this is Cottage Garden Thread from Australia. I've never stitched with this thread. And so I was super excited. I love the opportunity, love to try out a new thread. And they're so pretty, so, so pretty. And so what Rachel did, which I checked this morning, there's still some there if you want to come and stitch with me, right? So there's four, four threads. And my thing was that I was going to do this in October, but I've already moved on to Christmas. So I'm not quite sure when I'm going to start stitching these, but I had to have them because they were so cute. So Rachel kitted these up, but what she did is she picked her four favorite. No offense to the other 21, but there were 25 designers that, that participated. And so she picked four that she thought were fantastic different styles and and does has a little autumn garden mini kit so there's four patterns that only use these threads one of them is the tiny modernist autumn house on a hill so cute the other one is sweet wing studio happy fall y'all that is adorable. These are both um, designers I've never stitched before and as well as this one. So that is super, so cute. Autumn Garden Pansy Patch Quilts and Stitchery. This is from Canada. So this is why it took a hot minute for this kit to all come together. These patterns coming from Canada, but this is the third one in her in Rachel's little custom Autumn Garden bundle. And then you know I've stitched this designer before, my friend Liz. I love her unique twist on it where it's the, the image is the invert. So the fabric is what creates the image and the threads create the background. Super excited for that stitch. It looks kind of like a little cozy sweater, but not a sweater. I mean, it's a, anyway, so cute. It literally really allows the thread to pop and the variegation in some of those threads you can see I have to decide whether I'm going to be diligent enough to do the one-to-one -one stitch because I'm usually a rose stitcher even with the variegated thread whether it's up and down or sideways it depends on what I'm stitching 
but we'll see how much I do. But I love this sweet little finish and this very autumn-y, not so much Halloween-y. So I love it. I love it. I love it. And I mean, her display pictures are always so on point. So what Rachel did is she kitted up these four charts, these four threads, all in one bundle. You just add the fabric of your choice. And if there's some LFA, Ada, or linen, add to cart. But um, I think one of these will be perfect for all of these. Let's just see. So these three colors, I'm thinking Boston Tea Party. Let's just see how they look on Boston Tea Party, shall we, friends? Oh. Yep, that's it. So fantastic. Rachel, you should've just kidded them up with some Boston Tea Party, if I do say so. Love it. It, it complements this gold. They play nice together versus the other one, the cover bridge is more of a brownie tan versus the goldie tan and so i think whoopsie i think whoop that's a pretty color we gotta bring it back um i think that looks so good oh my goodness those colors were made for this and what is this this is boston tea party i hope you have some more rachel because i think this autumn garden needs to go on all well good thing i got a happy yard I'm so excited. So I'll have to pick one of those and give it a start this week. Because why not? So I got that stitchy goodness from Rachel. Let me just move everything off the table before I make a mess of things. Um, another stitchy enabling. I don't know if they're still there. If they are, pause, pause the video. If you've been waiting, you should go check. Pause the video and check right now. I, sorry, I should have opened them. I've showed you the box before, but it's just so fun to open a little present with you guys on camera. Mm -hmm. Do you know what this is? A little Kohana. A little special treat for me. It's a little Christmas special treat because sometimes you deserve it. And I've decided that my Christmas stitching, whoops, deserved this gorgeous red pair of Kohanas. And Rachel had some. So I added to card with the rest of my collection. <laughs> so that came in, super excited. Can't wait to start using those. They are, I mean, treat yourself. They are, they are fantastic, you know, heirloom scissors that are just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And then a couple things. So this is in stitching. But that's okay, we're gonna deviate just a little bit because it came from Rachel. And if you're adding to cart at Rachel's shop, I just don't want you to miss out on something. Whoops, sorry for the shaking of the camera. Um, she's talked about it before, but I just wanna show you what I got. So as a, I don't know, I'm a pencil user is the moral of the story um, because I let, I don't erase a lot. I just, I like to use pencils. And so I always have pencils, mechanical pencils, all the pencils. So anyway, a couple of months ago, Rachel and Sue on their floss toss, floss tube, which I will link down below, talked about these fancy pencils. I was like, fancy pencils, what is this about? I mean, so, you know, I know about the drawing ones, the straddles, I don't know. I bought some for Lily when she was in art class, when she was a freshman in high school something or other, you know, with the different lead types. I don't know. I don't really speak the speak of the art pencils, but they just kept talking about how smooth these pencils are. So I had to order myself some quality pencil. It's just a fun little treat. Um, and so what I did is I ordered the black, black wing. This is her starter point, starting point set. And so I ordered one for me and one for my mama because she's like, what's the pencil thing about? And so I just wanted to show you what comes in the starter kit in case you wanted to see. So they have four different leads, four different weights of leads. And so in the starter point, you get four of their signature pencils. It's just designer pencils. You need to go watch their thing. So you get four different designer pencils and their fancy sharpener. Now their sharpener is fantastic. And of course I can't open it. It, it is substantial. It is made from 
metal, not plastic, like with uh, one I have from Auto Depot or what, supply. This is a metal, high quality, beautiful. So of course, when I opened it last um, last night, I just came yesterday. I opened it last night. I had to sharpen my pencil. So not only did I get the starter point, I also got this volumes set, which is adorable. It comes in this set of 12 pencils. They're all the same. They do different releases. So this one was the release from June 22, the, the Fibonacci sequence. Mm -hmm. Something with math, which of course I'm an accountant. So I, I, this, this plus this times that, I don't really know but it was pretty and it's mathy and music-y. I thought that was fun. So it's a box, first of all, the box is adorable. 12 pencils, it comes in this cute little box. This is volumes. They have different colorways. That's probably not what they call them, but that's what I call them. Different colorways that they release, special editions. They only come out, you know, and then once they're gone, they're gone. So last but not least in the world of pencils. I promise this isn't a pencil commercial. We'll go, go on, but it's just so fun. So I broke this one out last night to, I was working inventory, all the way. anyway, pencil fun. And she, Rachel also sent me, I mean, this is, I didn't even know she'd never talked about these. So I hadn't added them to my cart. These are point guards. Now, of course, when you have a fancy pencil, with a fancy point that you use your fancy sharpener for. You wanna protect your point, so it's kinda of like a pen cap, but for your pencil point, and it's gold. There's three in the box. There's gold, silver, and black. My mom's already claimed one to go with her starter kit, um, but I had to keep the gold because it's beautiful. And it look, oh, beautiful point, writes like a dream, whatever graphite, weight lead thing this volume 55 is might be my favorite now i haven't sharpened any of the other ones to really say that but i love this one i wrote with it for hours last night only had to sharpen it once writes like a dream the eraser is adorable it's just fun so think when you're the, the who the what do you buy for the person who has everything holiday gift maybe a box of fancy pencils because they're fun. It's better than a tie, right? Anyway, and then, but you have to get these point cards because my mom was so excited. She's like, oh, that way when I throw it in my, my sketch bag, it doesn't break. Exactly. You don't want your point to break. And so, the, I mean, the gold tip, this is my favorite part. She didn't even know. That came. And then last but not least, she sent me this cute little, um, Okay, I'm gonna open it, sorry for the crinkle, but it's adorable. This could also be what you wanna get, like throw it in the stocking or something. So cute, it's a little black wing. I haven't, oh, that's my reflection. Um, it's this leather bound. Well, let's just open it, shall we? Don't think I'm not gonna use my Kohana scissors because I'm not gonna. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, beautiful leather bound case. Cute, size of my hand. Oh. <gasps> Look at it, it's got all content. Date started case, online pages. It's a little notes, little sketchbooks, whatever you want. It's got one of those um, straps to keep it closed and a little strap, it's perfect, to hold your perfect bite-sized little black wing pencil that matches it perfectly. This is a black wing slate notebook, small size, 160 pages, so cute. So all of this black wing stuff is on um, Rachel's website if you wanna go check it out. I loved it, I had to have it, so let's, deviate for a little bit. Let's go to quilting for fun. You want to? Okay. So the mystery dresser segment of the portion. Yay. Okay. So remember I told you guys back there, dresser blocks, a block and blocks. So last night I'm thinking sitting at the dinner table, 
And yes, I have a quilted tape roll on our kitchen table all the time. Um, I should have changed it to the Halloween one, but it's down in storage. Haven't found it yet. So my everyday table runner is this. I went and just grabbed it off the kitchen table. This is just a fun little table runner that is on my table every day. Fun. It probably has food on it. I wash it. You can tell it's got the wrinkle. You know, I, I quilted it. The, the, I love this pattern. It is a perfect scrap buster, easy to do pattern. And so how I came to share this one with you today. So this is the quilt runner that is on my table because I always try to have I'm a scrap keeper. And so in the UFO drawer are more scrap box, <laughs> more scrap blocks. Now I made this runner. I don't even know when, oh, 10 years ago. I don't know. It's been around for a while. So I don't even know. I don't have any more of this gray. So I, I can't make more of this particular one because dye lots change and grays change. That's the problem. Not the problem. But that's something to take into consideration when you're making scrap blocks like this that are going to have a foundation color solid is that you either want to a keep a bolt or a couple yards of it with those scrappy blocks so then as you make them you can have them they'll all match because right now i've got eight blocks certainly not enough to make another tabletop runner could i make a pillow sure I could make a pillow that's in an X, cute. I could make a pillow that's in a diamond, also cute. Or I could make some project bags or project keepers or tote bags. I can make a tote bag. I love to use quilt blocks for tote bags too. So anyway, that's just fun. And this is a pattern that I came up with years ago. It's really, it's, it's a scrap. You kind of sew on the, if you want a tutorial on this one, let me know in the comments down below and I will add it to the list. But this is just a great, cause you can see, look how tiny that scrap is. Yeah, all the scraps. Um, it's just, fun and you can do it in Christmas themed or Halloween themed or mix and match. Oh, that's interesting. It's like half square triangles, arrows pointed in this way. That would have been a fun quilt, wouldn't it? Well, pickles. Um, so we'll just have to see. So that was, these are some, you know, eight blocks that were in my UFO mystery dresser. Um, a pattern that I came up with years ago. Haven't sewn it in years. But it's not that hard. I'd love to show you if you want to see. Let me know. So that was today's quilty segment of the show. Let's. Do you watch Instagram? Have you watched me on Instagram? Did you see this the other day? No, don't worry. I'm not selling you Tupperware. Remember Tupperware parties back in the day? This is Tupperware. I wish it had a date on it. Maybe it does. No, it doesn't. What do you think this is? From the 70s, the 80s? I don't know. But it came from my cookie grandma, which is my mother's mother's house when we cleaned her house. Um, after she passed away, I took her collection of these Tupperware containers. And I didn't use them in my kitchen because I already had storage, canisteries storage for my kitchen. So instead they came into my studio. Don't you bring Tupperware into your studio? Mm -hmm. So this week, a happy mail came to me on Saturday when I went to the post office and my sweet friend Sue sent me a package of goodies. And so it is in my Tupperware. Let me show you first. Hold on. Let me show you the, the pretty one before I unpretty it. So remember, Sue dyes that Ada and linen. She also dyes it, but she started off and has been dyeing yarn with her daughter. They have a company called Legacy Fiber Arts. So if you are a knitter, you need to be following them on Instagram, checking them out. They have lots of Christmas colored ways, all the things. I don't speak yarn yet. The key is yet. Um, so I don't really know what I'm talking about. So if I say things wrong, 
just laugh along with me because I have no idea what I'm talking about. I watch, they have a floss tube, her and her daughter, Sue. It's adorable. It's not a floss tube. No, it's called a yarn podcast, but it's on YouTube. I watch, start, I've watched two or three of their videos. I listen to them as I'm sewing. It's yarns like a whole new world. Knitting, it's like another language. I mean, I get it. So quilting, I you, probably a, a knitter is probably like thinks quilting is a, another language. Maybe, maybe they don't. But right now, the 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 knitting and the yarn and all the vocab. I feel like I need flashcards, like I'm in high school, or uh, you know, trying to to figure out all the terms. I don't have any idea what I'm talking. But the moral story is it's so pretty so this was a beautiful ski she sent me two hanks skeins bundles i don't oh it's called a hundred gram skein doesn't look like a skein to me skein should be a little, little short anyway big old yarn knitty skein hundred yarn gram this colorway is called griswold christmas tree and it's the four ply DK weight 7525. Do you know what that means? Nope, me neither, but it's pretty. <laughs> so she sent me this one and she sent me this one. Okay, it came like this. But then I, of course, had to message my friend, Rachel and Sue and said, um, so I don't know much but I feel like this needs to turn into this. Okay, so ladies, this, I haven't I haven't even messaged you, but I feel like we need to have a Quilters 101 video. Would anybody be interested in that? Because I have about 3,000 questions. Like, why do you do this? Number one, why do you do this? I get so it doesn't not. I mean, the skeins, I, I understand that fundamentally because of skeins and floss get all knotted if you don't, you know, prepare them properly. Like what? Anywho, do we have like a 20 question 101, like knitting for dummies 101, which is really like Carrie has 20 questions and Sue and Rachel answer them. Does that sound fun? I think it sounds fun. What do you think? You guys got questions? Put them down below. Maybe I'll make a list. They don't even know. Let's do it. Anyway, so she sent me this one and then she also picked out a pattern for me that um, was the is a modern first hat super cute pattern and then she sent me two containers of needles that are not in here anymore <clears throat> here's one it's these need the needles on the rounds so the moral of the story is you can see that my beautiful and what was this this yarn is called whoville from the grinch so adorable so i wanted to make um, um my goal is to make a beanie I just want you to know, yesterday I'm talking to my parents on, on the FaceTube and, and my dad was like, so what, what you're learning to knit now? What are you knitting now? And then my mother chimes in, you know, one of those bonnets. I roll. I go, bonnet? No, no, no. I, I'm, a bon I'm not knitting a bonnet. <laughs> and so my dad was like, oh, you're knitting bonnets? I need a bonnet. I was like, no, it's not a bonnet. It's one of those beanie hats. But bonnets. Maybe we need bonnets. Anyway, so you can see that I haven't gotten that far since the yarn is attached to the ball and not to anything else because I did a lot of learning this week. This came on Saturday and so that derailed all my Saturday plans and I sat there and I watched a couple different YouTube. First, you gotta learn how to cast on. This is this is where the vocab end. Cast on, knitting and purling and thing like, okay. So I learned with probably 10 yards of yarn. And I've learned that once you knit, purl, what, once you do the things a couple different times, it really doesn't become, it's kind of like cross stitch floss where it becomes unusable. So I've, I've tossed my learning and then I've decided I needed to go into my scrap bucket of yarn because I could not use this good stuff to learn on. So I went into my bucket of yarn. I have no idea. I had this balled up in in a miscellaneous bucket yeah i have a tub a plastic tub of yarn not because i'm a knitter because i did needle punching for about a hot minute and so in that time i collected a whole bucket of yarn but i wrapped it up in balls because a it looks pretty 
and B, it looked pretty. Really, that's it. And so because I did that, all the labels are gone. I have no idea what this is. Acrylic, cotton, wool, alpaca, what weight. I know there's numbers and codes. I don't have any idea what any of this is. But I decided it feels in the same ballpark weight wise as what Sue sent me. So let's learn on this. So the good news is, which I'm super excited about. Look, it actually looks like it could be something. It's not going to be a bonnet. It's going to be a beanie. But look, I actually, and so I decided to do the two, two. Again, don't know what I'm talking about, but it's knit two, pearl two, knit two, pearl two. Cast on, except for the hole right there. I have no idea what happened, but eh, just skip that step and keep going. I'm learning. So I'm excited. I don't, I don't understand how it works, but I cast it on, I don't know, 88, 92, some number. So I'm just learning. Maybe this will become a beanie hat one day. Maybe it'll just be a tube. I don't even know how you do. The next step is I have to do this for a while. And then at some point I have to start decreasing. I don't understand how you decrease. Like, do you grab two circles? when you're knitting and purling, like more YouTube videos. But anyway, so I just thought I'd share my new adventure. We might have a knitting portion of the program. What do you think? Interesting, not interesting? Are you a knitter? I feel like there's a lot of cross stitchers who are knitters or quilters or both. Why not do both? So Rachel also, because she's so sweet, sent me this beautiful, she calls it spa yarn. What makes it a spa yarn? It feels totally different from Sue's stuff and that stuff. So again, it's probably another material. Listen, quilters, cotton. The end. Yarn, so many different things. But she called it spa yarn. I'm excited. I don't know what I'm... I have to talk to her about it. But it's pretty. It's purple. So... That is in my cute little Tupperware of fun. All right, friends. Yay. That is my story for today. Woo-wee. I thought it was going to be short and sweet because I didn't have that much stitching, but I ended up rambling a lot about all the things. Huh. Well, so I'm not going to deep dive you into a Project Keeper shop update because you just don't just get excited. Um, the moral of the story is October 15th. So that is next Saturday, October 15th at 1 p.m. is the Project Keeper release. The spoiler alert for some of you that have been patiently waiting is there will be Project bags in this release. Vintage stitching project bags are included in this release. So it's a collection of keepers and project bags. It is 90% Christmas. There is a handful that are not Christmas that I had already started that didn't make it into September. So they're in October. But besides that, October is all Christmas. November 15th will also be Christmas. And that's what I've got so far. So there we are, friends. As always, leave me a comment down below. I hope you like, subscribe, and join me on Instagram. Lots of social fun. Um, that's what I've got. So I hope you have a great day, a great week, and I will see you next Friday, friends. Happy stitching.